First of all, let's clarify one, two things on the EU budget. There are some voices in the Parliament that say that the framework has to change totally, mostly the Liberal Party. Do you think that it is the right time to make such changes or are there changes that are doable right now and recommended in order to have adequate resources? Of course, I negotiated twice the multi-annual budget framework, uh, the framework 2017-2013 and 2014-2020. I would say dreams is something for private life. In politics, you must have realistic visions. And uh, after we agreed the new budget framework until 2020, it was obvious for us that in the second half, a real revision is needed because we will run out of payments and this uh, very tight framework uh, does not respond properly to the new challenges we are facing, like uh, common border control, refugee crisis, to take it also as a common issue. Member states did a lot of mistakes. They didn't take on board all these new things. So therefore, let's try to get these proposals from the Commission, which are not touching the big blocks of the budget because they are national envelopes, but they are an intelligent answer. Under the existing circumstances, we have to work. And to clarify, we have as well that we expect from uh, United Kingdom, uh, which is on the way to leave via Brexit, they should be very careful and not to intervene in areas where they are out when it is implemented. Let me ask you on this. Let's say that uh, the Britain triggers Article 50 and the procedure starts. There are issues like participation in the single market or in other areas that have to be discussed, but do you think that actually someone can participate in the single market, for instance, without paying its share? No, it cannot work. We agreed on the free movements, including free movement of people as the hardcore of the internal market. Uh, let me take the example of Norway. Norway and also Iceland and in another way Switzerland are joining under certain conditions the internal market. Norway contributes 700 million euros every year to be part of the internal market. They even give specific fundings uh, to 15 countries, especially in the area of sustainable uh, development, economic uh, stability and research. And to participate in research programs in Erasmus, of course they have to contribute. It's You cannot imagine, let's say, the so-called net payers take over the British contribution and they just have access for free. This does not happen in theatre as well. So which is the best way for the EU to start the negotiations? Of course, the ball is in the field of the Brits. They don't have a real plan till now. And let's say there were some politicians from the so-called elite which saw the priority in their political career and they didn't see the real interests of the country. So we are now in a difficult situation. If Brexit meets Brexit, there are different options. It's between Norway or Kazakhstan, finally. And the idea that they just can negotiate international trade agreements within two years period is a dream. We know how long it lasts and they don't have even the resources and the capacities because the last years it was the Commission negotiating based on a mandate of member states international trade agreements. And it's not the case that China, India or Brazil is just waiting for the Brits. Do you think that the CETA agreement could work as a guideline for this? I think CETA is a agreement uh, which is one of the best uh, trade agreements ever achieved, also taking on board certain recommendations from Parliament as far as the uh, new uh, model of dispute settlement agreement is concerned. So uh, we have, of course, strong movements against CETA, but I give advice to everybody who raises his finger. First, he should read the agreement before he raises his voice. And Europe uh, must uh, explain to its citizens, do we want to be part of the global village? Do we want to maintain also our interest based on rules of trade agreements because it's not just free trade. The Canadians, for example, are protecting a bit their dairy industry. We are protecting a bit our meat industry. So there are things like this as well. And on the other hand, there is a Pacific trade agreement, which includes America, which includes Australia, which includes uh, countries like Chile. So do we want to set the rules or the others? This is just a simple question.